So today I'll probably keep it pretty basic and short, but if you want to get into the nitty gritty, feel free to at any point put any questions in the chat box or the question answer is probably better. Um, but yeah, so broker relations is basically the foundation of your acquisitions team. So compared to commercial versus residential, right? Many people are probably familiar with residential in the sense that there are two brokers, right? You have a buyer broker and a seller broker. In multifamily, especially larger properties, multifamily or, or uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Commercial um, is considered five units and above. So once you start getting into that space, especially in the space that we're in, which is about a hundred plus units. Sometimes properties are smaller because of the build to rent space, but um, to keep it simple, there are no buyer brokers. I'm basically acting as our firm's buyer broker. Um, so there, there's only a seller broker in this space or in multifamily. So what that means is there is a brokerage firm or a team of brokers or one broker for that matter that is representing sellers. So it's their job to go out and build relations with your developers, your owners, your operators. And it's their job to get the listing to, to sell their property. Um, so their main focus, these brokers are focusing on these sellers, right? It's their main goal to be very close with um, sellers where it's our job. The whole po point of this webinar is to talk about, you know, our relationship as an acquisitions team um, with the brokerage firm. And it's our job to create relationships with these brokers that have these listings. Um, so there's no one size fits all. There never is in this business, but the way I'm going to talk about it is how we do it or how I do it specifically. Um, so we, first off, you need to define your markets. You need to know where you want to invest, where you want to look for properties, where you want to source properties. And for us, that's the Southeast. Including Texas, of course. Um, so Sunbelt, and what we do is we, over time we've changed our system many times. Not only software, but how we do it. Um, so to keep it simple, so everyone can do it. What I recommend or what we use is a, so first thing is create a system that works for you. So um, the system that I've built our CRM. Um, in is in Excel. Everyone can access Excel. It's free. It's super easy to get. Um, you could use Google Sheets and I actually can share a screen. I'm going to share what I've created. Let me know in the chat box, just one person, if you can see this Excel sheet. I'm going to wait. Yes. Okay. Thank you. So this is an Excel sheet that we actually use. This is real. Um, I'm hiding names just for, you know, confidentiality. I don't want to expose anyone, but whatever. So this is a sheet that all the markets, not all the markets, but a lot of the markets that we focus on or that you can tell that I focus on. Um, this isn't fully built out. This is a, let's call it a rendering of what we use. It is a little small. Perfect. Thank you. So what it includes, it includes is the state, the team, um, and more specifically the city or, or town, if you will. Um, so for instance, Walker Dunlap, Orlando and Jacksonville, someone that is responsible for the communication with that team. So I'm Chris, me, this is all me, um, touches per month. So how many times do I want to engage with this person, whether it's text, call, email, whatever it may be, see them in person, excuse me. Um, so sometimes it's a market that we get a lot of volume that maybe this team only works on land deals, but sometimes they have um, multifamily deals. So it really depends on the team. It has nothing to do with, okay, I like this person better or not, sometimes. but um, it's more about kind of what they can provide for our firm and, and what aligns for us. And that isn't super easy to figure out. It takes a lot of time. It's ever changing because these markets are ever changing. The people that they represent ever change. It's not like one broker sells all the deals for Alliance, which is a big developer, right? Um, that's just not how it works. A lot of times sellers, very large sellers or developers will 
kind of filter through different brokerage firms to kind of spread the love, if you will. Um, and so it's not, again, it's not a one size fits all. So this is what works for us. This is a system, or I'm just going to continue through it. So how many touches per month? This varies wildly. This is more of a guide than, and a reference rather than following it to a T. So a lot of times, you know, since I'm here in Austin, I'm meeting with teams pretty often um, to a point where this isn't really relevant, but it's better to keep track of and, and build to reference at any point. Um, this just gets into more of when I'm communicating to them. So first week of the month, second week of the month, third week, fourth week, whatever it may be. And then day of the week, Monday, Tuesday, Monday through Thursday, Friday, I try to keep free um, for all communication. And a lot of times when you do reach out to these brokers, you're not going to get them on the first try. Um, they're busy people. They're doing things. It's a system that is just for guidance. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing that and go back to this, but I thought that for a visualization purpose, you need to create something. Um, whether it's basic as just putting something into your notes on your phone or something like that. Um, so what, what and, and to initiate those relationships, you need to reach out to them. They're not going to be reaching out to you. Um, they will eventually when they have opportunities and they know you can perform on that and, and it's a good fit, but to start out the relationship, you need to be the one that's doing a lot of the outreach um, and basically create a, uh, a role of, of people that are in the industry that you need to be connected with. Um, so I, I've talked about you know using helpful tools such as a CRM. Something we also use, now that I'm talking about our system, is I've built this out in Excel we use something called um, DealPath. It's a pipeline management service that has like a contact page. And I basically cre created this, we as a team created this, um, this list and imported it into the software. And it can remind us, okay, the, the first week of the month, you have these four teams that you should communicate if you haven't already. And I can put a little note in that. There's free softwares out there that help with that. Um, there, there's obviously big ones like Salesforce, but you don't need to spend a tremendous amount of money to do this. There's, um, so, so find a tool to help you just to simplify it, make it a little bit more automated. Um, these are still authentic conversations that I'm having with real people. Um, so automate what you can, but not over automate it. If that makes sense. Um, okay. Next in this is like, be consistent and be yourself. So this is really how I like to kind of handle my relationships, not only in business, but, in, you know, real world, or, or it is real world, but with my friendships with my family, you know, you, you have to be yourself. You cannot um, say, okay, our firm is going to perform like this on every single deal and do this and, and just say fraudulent things and just never be true to your word. So knowing your boundaries of what your limitations are is super important and communicate that, right? It's their job to find deals for you as well. You know, you're reaching out to them and, and initiating and engaging, but once they know what you're looking for, they're also going to bring you stuff um, and, and they're going to come to mind. You're going to come to their mind when, okay, um, say your, your criteria is a 10 unit in Raleigh, North Carolina, you know, when one of those hits their desk, they're going to say, okay, passiveinvesting.com, you know, they're going to be interested. So knowing your limitations and communicating that well is super important. And then being consistent, um, using the Excel sheet that I just showed you as a guide is, is you can see how often I'm actually communicating to these people per year. Um, sometimes with teams, it, it could be as often as every other day. Maybe not that often, but pretty, pretty darn often. A couple of times a week, I'm talking to some, some brokers just to stay in touch, um, just because the relationship is there and it's, it's not forced or anything like that. Um, and when you're consistent, those things happen more often than not. Um, okay, so determine the size. This was kind of leads into being consistent. Um, determine the size and location of your network. Um, this goes hand in hand with your criteria, you know, define where you want to be working, where you want to look, but also determine how many relationships you're able to handle. 
right? We're, we're a team on the acquisitions team. We're five people. Not all of us are in communication with all brokers. We, at one point we were dividing and conquering. At one point we, we realized that's not the best way to do it. It's really to be more natural and, and see who you connect with and maybe you handle this relationship because you have a better connection. Um, and there, there's thousands and thousands and thousands of brokers and there's a lot of brokerage teams. And what I would recommend is pick someone on that team that you feel you'd connect with, whether it's through a picture or whatever. And once you start communicating and they realize, you realize, you know, they, they communicate back well, back to you well, you know, just continue the communication with them. You don't have to follow up with five people on the same team in the same market because that exists, right? Um, a team here in Texas, any team, doesn't matter. They probably have five to seven people front facing that are communicating to people, depending on their deal flow, of course. But pick a person, pick the size, pick a location and, and define those, create those relationships. That's really, really important. Um, guys, don't hesitate to write anything in the chat or question. Um, what is it? The Q and A box. I know I'm just rambling on here, and a lot of this is relatively basic. So if you want me to get into the nitty gritty on things, don't don't hesitate to ask. Is there a presentation that I can follow? I don't have a presentation. I'm just speaking on kind of what I know and off the top of my head, more or less. Um, the Excel sheet, I can't share that. I'm sorry, but it is this video will be, I think, is recorded and will be posted somewhere so you can reference that video, pause it and check it out. Um, develop meaningful connections. This is something I've been touching upon for the 15 minutes. Uh, you, you need to have, in order to maintain a relationship, you need to have a relationship. You need to have a meaningful connection. No what's going on in their lives. Know if they just had a child that they're gonna be out for a couple of weeks and congratulate them or whatever it is. Like um, treat them as not a friend because you know at the end of the day it's business, but almost like it, not everything is only business. And people appreciate that, people know that. Um, people aren't robots. So have a, a meaningful connection, open up about your personal life a little bit, right? I just moved to Austin. People are asking about that. Um, so things like that, it's, it goes a long way. And uh, yeah, I don't, I don't really know what else. There's, there's a lot to developing and maintaining relationships um, in multifamily brokers. So a lot of, I think, let's talk about the different type of broker maybe. So not all of them are the same. You know, you'll have someone that's super brokery versus someone that's not. What that means is someone, a broker that is, how do I word this? Someone that is not an open book, right? Okay, say you're in a best and final or you're in an offering process and you're communicating all of the communication through one person. That person's running the deal, let's call it. And um, they will be like a closed book, they won't tell you, okay, you know, this is where you probably should be next round or um, just really not giving you any, any information that can help you by any means. Um, or someone that's saying, okay, here's a group here, you need to be X, Y, and Z and do this. And it could just feel almost like, not fraudulent by any means, but just like not guiding you in the path that will be best for your team and really for them. So you need to navigate these waters. And once you understand the different personalities and how people work, you can kind of tell who's who. And they're basically pretty open about it, um, about how they do their jobs. But everyone's different. So knowing, you know, this person will give me any information that I need, anything at all, versus the opposite of the spectrum, they will not tell you anything. They're going to be a closed book. It's going to be a process that's very secretive. So there's, there's two very different ways a broker can handle the journey of a deal. Um, so that's pretty interesting. Um, let's see, I, I'm running out of, you know, I didn't write too many touching points for this. So please don't hesitate to ask any questions um, or I will end it relatively early. Um, 
if you would like, I can share that Excel sheet again while I'm on here. If you'd like that, please say yes, and I can go through it a little bit more. Um, nothing quite a group. Maybe I'm not getting anything in the chat box. Yes. Okay. I'm saying I'm going to guess that was a yes to share the other screen. So let me do that. Okay. Can you guys see this? Is it big, small? Perfect. Okay. Perfect. Awesome. So different markets. Again, we have other markets. Um, this is only. Uh, an example of a sheet it is not the full sheet. Um, the different teams, right? You have Arcadia, Capstone, CBRE, Cushman Wakefield, IPA, JBM, Florida, Newmark, Walker Dunlap. There, there's more than that too. Uh, Marcus Milchap, local brokers. Um, in Charleston, I can name probably five local brokers that actually handle volume or deals that we would be interested in. So um, let's see. Um, on top of this list, you know, you have you have other types of brokers. You don't have this is investment sales brokers. You also have debt brokers, something that I haven't really discussed upon, but um, let me talk about bro debt brokers for a second and then I'll answer some of these questions. So a debt broker is someone that is uh, basically finding, it could be for some CBRE, Newmark. A lot of these brokerage firms have a debt team or a capital markets team, and they represent, you. a lot of times, if a deal is sold by a firm, they'd like you to use their debt team. Um, and what that team does is they actually go out to the market, the debt market, and get you debt. And they try to get you the best debt, whether it's a fixed rate from agency, a floating rate from agency, whatever it may be. They, they present a plethora of options. They should know the deal well because it's their brokerage firm that's hosting it. They should have all the documents already in hand. Um, and a lot of times it's, it's just, it's easy to use them, not recommended all the time to use the same brokerage firm um, that's selling the deal as debt. But that's another whole other ball game of how to navigate that. Um, but I, I think you know, we have a team member, Ed, who's the director of capital markets that it has come on in the past, let's call it year, that has navigated that for us a lot better than what we've done in the past. Um, so th there's a whole nother sheet of debt brokers that we don't use one specific debt broker, nor should we, right? It's um, people have different relationships in this game, in this, in this game, in this uh, environment. So it's, it's really important to spread the love, if you want to call it that. Um, all right, let me answer some of these questions. What are some ways you find brokers in your target market? Where do you get their contact information? Sure. So a lot of times it's simple as a Google search where you can say, okay, uh, for instance, Cushman and Wakefield, Alabama. Um, I know they're located in Birmingham. Um, or Yeah, Birmingham. I almost said Binghamton because I'm from New York, Birmingham, Alabama. So um, I know that they have a team there. I'll look for their head broker, simple Google search, and you will find their investment sales team and it'll say their current listings right on their website. And once you find that listing on Google, you can sign up for their email blasts. Um, so you just give them your email, whatever it may be, if you want it to be a work email, chris at passinglist.com, whatever, they will send you automated messages every time they have a deal that comes out. And a lot of times you can fill out, okay, I'm looking for a class A, 100 plus units of conventional multifamily. And then they'll have a student team, they'll like a student housing team, they'll have an affordable team. So um, it's as simple as just kind of digging into the brokerage firm's webpage, because a lot of them are standardized, like Cushman, like Newmark. Um, and then within that, you can pick cities. So a lot of times like, okay, I want, if you're in uh, North Carolina, for instance, if you want, uh, if you want 
an email blast of Charlotte deals, but you don't want deals from Raleigh, you can define that. Um, so that, that's a way. And then those brokers are attached to every single deal. So it, there's always a reference to who is representing that deal. It's usually a team of like four or five people, depending on the size. And um, their contact information is all over the place. It's, it's on the broker offering memorandum. It's on the email blast. It's on all that stuff. Um, so I hope I answered that. Uh, Blake, what is your typical method of reaching out to brokers, phone call, email, et cetera? Great question. Um, just like our internal team members, everyone likes a different service. So for instance, Ed on our team is best when you just call him up and he'll give you an answer right then. But if you send him an email, a little bit slower. It's the same with brokers. Um, you, you Usually I start out with an email. Hi, I'm Chris Neary. Very nice to meet you. I'm the senior acquisitions associate for this firm. Here's a little, and I usually send a page. This is our portfolio. This is what we've done in the past year. We've worked with your team here, X, Y, and Z. Um, would love to jump on a call. Something simple like that. Um, usually an email is a little bit more formal. Once you start building that relationship, I can call them with some people up unannounced and just say, hey, what's going on? I could shoot them a text. Hey, you free for a call this afternoon? Something as simple as that. Um, but I think to start out, email is the best route. A lot of people will not answer, even if you're, you know, buying deals left and right. People are busy. People don't see emails. Some people don't even use email and they're a big time broker. So don't be offended. Um, you, you'll create relationships regardless. Just, just continue the path forward. Uh, but I recommend Blake starting with an email and then turning that into a text or call if you like that better. Um, okay, yeah, if you don't work for a larger firm like me, you, how do you persuade brokers you're buying, you're a real buyer? Really good question. This is where a lot of people I've talked to in the industry struggle. And, you know, I'm fortunate enough where I'm with a firm that, you know, can back what they say and, and have a proven track record. That's actually a common um sentence that's used proven track record i think we're at a point where we're in a market period where um brokers don't have the upper hand meaning there's a lot of there's still deal flow there's actually a significant amount of deal flow and with how choppy the market is with debt everyone's aware what's going on they have a little bit less leeway they're a little bit less picky I think now is a great time to be someone with maybe not a an abundant track record, but is still a real buyer, has the means to buy, is looking to buy, is able to raise capital, has capital, whatever it may be. I think now is a perfect time in the market where you can get in without too much pushing back on your track record because brokers are looking for people to buy. I'm not saying overpay for a deal by any means. I'm just saying continue being consistent, being yourself, and someone will give you a chance. Just like someone um, gave the three partners, you know, Danny, Brandon, and Dan a chance. You know, th before this, they were limited partners. They did smaller stuff. They did construction, and then they combined together, and, and the syndication world wasn't as abundant as it is today. So someone took a chance on them and said, okay, here's a deal. I think they actually got two deals at once and um you know it, it's a moment where you need to perform you cannot fail it, it's super important that you're doing what you're going to say you're going to do but someone will eventually give you a chance um so i i would just say be consistent for every 50 lois letter of intents you send out maybe you get one um when you first start out that's okay as long as you're consistent with it, one will land, um, if that makes sense. I hope that helps. Uh, will it be a recording made available? Yes, there will be a recording. Um, I'm not too sure when that'll be up, but I believe these go up on YouTube um, and you should be getting a link. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, yeah. Okay, let's see. That was the Q&A box. There's some stuff here in the chat. 
how do you approach brokers if you're new to commercial real estate? It's a good question. Um, I think it it really has to come from you how you're going to approach them. I don't. You need to know your goals. If you're approaching them to to buy commercial real estate, what are you going to buy? Okay, I want to buy a ten unit. Tell them that. You just say, hey, I'm I'm I'm. I wouldn't say I'm relatively new, but I am. Uh, you know. I'm looking for a 10 unit in here. I'm going to buy it with this means um, I've been looking for some time. just haven't, you know, been fortunate enough to land one, but um, once I get one under contract, I don't know, just explain what you're going to do and know what you're going to do. Um, and I think having a plan is, is really important. It's really hard in real estate to know exactly you know, how you're going to get from zero to a hundred. There are, there's no straight path. Um, but, but approach them and, and be honest. Just be like, listen, I'm, I haven't landed a deal yet. I, I'm, I'm eager to buy. This is my, my range. Do you have anything for me? They're going to send you everything they have because they're, you know, it's their job to connect. So um, just, just reach out just approach them. I think email is best. Um, usually they don't phone calls unless they have the number saved, especially if they're a little bit bigger. Um, yeah, that's, that's probably it. So I just saw the recording will be emailed to everyone tomorrow morning for your questions on that. Um, we're at the 30 minute mark. I think I'm going to stop here. Uh, I appreciate everyone joining and listening in. I really hope this was helpful. Um, definitely encourage you to pop over to this and use that webinar link or whatever it's called, the uh, special code, and you can get that discount. I believe next week's um, webinar is here. So structure your investor calls for success with Taylor. So feel free to sign up for that. You can go to... Um, this link here. I think we could put it in into the chat box and you can just register again. Please feel free to, to reach out to me. Um, awesome. Thank you very much. <laughs>